Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com, and Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at HeyDrRob. So, hope you liked my last video. We talked in pretty good detail about the position of the spine, how the core works, how we need the spine to be in that good lordosis, that good curve. Again, lordosis. I'm going to pound this word home. If you follow me enough, you're going to be experts in what a lordosis is. It's this nice 35 degree curve here in the spine. The reason we want it here is the discs will not bulge in this position. Okay? If I have a patient who's got a really bad disc and I put them in lordosis, they often go, oh, feels good. Okay? We know, we know from the previous video that we flatten that spine out. Okay? If we flex it like so, if we move it through a range of motion, it's going to push these bones together and through hydraulic, hydraulic pressure, it's going to force that fluid back and you're going to end up like with a disc bulge like this guy right here. Okay? So, I was looking back at that video and I thought, you know what, you guys probably need a better demonstration. So I've got this little other spine model here. I hope you can see this. So again, here's one segment of the spine, okay? This is the back, this is the front. This yellow guy right here, this is top down, this is the spinal cord. These are the nerves that go down to your legs, okay? Whether this is L4-5 or L5-S1, it doesn't really matter. They all function the same. So this guy right here is the annulus fibrosis, which is that ligamentous part of the disc that we talked about. This ring of the donut right here. Now you're looking top down at this right now. This is front, this is back. That blue stuff right there is the nucleus pulposus, the jelly portion of the disc. And that little red path out the side basically is a disc herniation or a bulge weaving its way through because this model is showing somebody that has flexed too much. So this is what it looks like. So if you're doing a sit up, if I'm on my back and I'm doing a sit up, if I'm doing a crunch, if I'm pulling my knees to my chest and I'm going to review later on down the road, I'm going to take all the gray area and we're going to show you all of the exercises to avoid to make sure this does not happen to you. When you're doing that flexion based movement, you take the spine out of lordosis, you squeeze, let's see if we can get this here, there we go, you squeeze the front of the disc and you can see it smashing down in front. And now if we get this close enough to the camera, if you look right there, right there, that's what a disc bulge looks like. Okay, we squeeze a little bit more and you can see that herniate even further. Now that's pushing on the spinal cord and the nerves and you're going to be in a ton of pain in your back and in your leg. If it gets to this point, we can usually do some therapy and I'm going to show you how to push that disc back in in a, in a future video, but a lot of times epidural injections, sometimes even surgery to clip that disc off. But I'm telling you right now, 100%. If you follow my lead, you keep the spine in lordosis, you will not herniate a disc. You will not bulge a disc. If you sit and you keep your spine in this position, sometimes with a little lumbar support, if you avoid the flexion-based movements, you will give your spine absolutely no reason to create a disc bulge. Now, sometimes trauma will create a, you know, a massive bulge. Sometimes there's things that we can't control, but typically, Disc bulges, disc herniations are repetitive strain disorders. If I took a perfectly healthy spine and I said to that person, what I want you to do for the next eight hours is do nothing but bend over and touch your toes, lie on your back and do sit up after sit up after sit up. If I gave them a medicine ball and put it on their chest and I said, now start doing sit ups. Like you see so many people doing it at the gym because they feel like it works their abs. That person most likely would end up with a disc bulge, even if they start out with a healthy back. So, if you remember back to the first video, keep it in lordosis, use the core to contract it, to contract around it so it stays safe and it doesn't move out of that lordosis, you're not gonna have problems. So, hope you liked this video. Hope that was educational enough for you. Again, hit me up on Twitter at HeyDrRob or Instagram or uh, Facebook at HeyDrRob. Check out my website, HeyDrRob.com. Check out my book, Protect Your Back 101. And we're going to take all the guesswork out of what hurts the discs. And like me, an ex-disc sufferer, I'm going to show you how to not hurt. So, like I wrote down up here, Protect Your Back 101. Be healthy. We'll see you soon. <music>